sorry. I'm sorry. Please pass out. Please pass out. Please pass out. Please pass out. Hey guys, it's Dr. Dan here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I'm a practicing orthopedic spine surgeon. And here on YouTube, I teach medical concepts by reviewing medical dramas like Grey's Anatomy. Today we're doing part two of the very intense plane crash episode of Grey's Anatomy. It's season eight, the season finale, coming to you right after this. All right, guys, before I get started, you all know the drill. You gotta show your favorite surgeon some love by smashing that like button below and supporting this channel. Also, if you don't wanna miss any future reaction videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications. And this episode I'm doing because you guys commented and let me know that this is the episode you wanted me to react to. So make sure you leave a comment down below what you would like me to react to next. I read every single one of them and I appreciate all the kind, encouraging comments you guys leave. Thank you so much. Let's get started. Derek! I don't understand how this keeps happening. Christina, we have to find him. I'm serious. I do not understand how this keeps happening. We have to find him because I don't think he went for help. We keep dying. We're in a plane crash, Mayor, like, like right now. This is true. Christina does keep dying. In another episode that I reacted to not too long ago, a icicle fell from the sky and impaled her and she almost died. The chances of that happening are pretty low. I looked it up on Google and it looks like the odds of dying from a cataclysmic storm, which probably includes getting impaled by an icicle, is like one in 54,000. The chances of dying in a plane crash are so low, they can't even calculate the odds. Honestly, this is pretty unrealistic that these characters keep getting placed in situations where they almost die. I get it, it makes for great television. This is gonna ding this episode's realism score. And if you didn't know, I score every episode based on its realism and also its entertainment value. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video when I give you guys my scores. You are still my person, even if I'm not yours. Meredith. 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 I heard your voice. I thought I, thought I was driving. All right, so just a recap from the last episode, Dr. Shepard had actually had his arm trapped in a piece of metal and he used the rock to free his own hand by smashing his own hand. And his hand is probably very injured at this point. He fainted, that's not good. Christina and Meredith are having a moment here where they're talking about how you're still my person. What they're referring to is in residency, you really have a lot of camaraderie. You develop really strong bonds with the people who you're going through residency with. It's like you're going to war together. You're like brothers and sisters at the end of residency. You know, honestly, if they survive this plane crash, residency is just gonna be a cakewalk for them at this point. Loosen the tourniquet a little bit. And you'll bleed to death. I need to save my hand. Well, I'm trying to save your life. Derek asks Meredith, loosen the tourniquet, please. So a tourniquet is actually a device that's used to stop the flow of blood through a limb, and you can really use anything for this. It can be a belt, a bandage, and in orthopedic surgery, we actually use tourniquets quite a bit. We actually use pneumatic tourniquets, which are these blood pressure cuffs, essentially, and we put them in the top of the arm or the top of the leg, and it basically helps with bleeding when you're doing a limb surgery. And in this video, you see this person wrapping this pneumatic tourniquet around the arm. And also there's a process here where you exsanguinate the limb by using this elastic bandage, and you're basically squeezing all the blood out of the limb so it really becomes a bloodless field when you make your incision. And here you can see the pressure of the tourniquet being turned up, similar to a blood pressure cuff. Dr. Shepard here asks Meredith to turn down the tourniquet so that he can save his hand. And what he's referring to is that when a tourniquet is turned up for too long, the blood flow stops to the 
limb, it can actually cause muscle damage and nerve damage, and that's what he's worried about. So when any type of extremity surgery goes for too long, after a certain limit, after two hours, we actually turn the tourniquet down and let the blood flow into the limb again before we turn it back up to resume a surgery that's going for a while. Oh, safety pin, safety pin. Bring that. Do you have a t-shirt or a bandana? We have to close the wound. Here's the safety pin. Weave your way inside and out, and then put the bandana on top of it and tape it. And what's the, what's the t-shirt for? Put it in my mouth. I'm probably going to scream a lot. Derek here has a wound in his forearm, it looks, and he's asking Meredith to close it using a safety pin. So this is a step that I don't really agree with. Taking that flap of skin and sealing off the wound is not really going to do much. Pretty much the same as taking a bandage and covering the wound and making sure it doesn't get exposed to prevent infection. Only other situation that would be different is if Derek had had a major arterial injury and he was just gushing blood and blood was coming everywhere, it really wouldn't even be a safety pin there too. He would just need to keep the tourniquet up and keep the wound covered with the bandage. So I really don't think the safety pin really here is a good move, it's really over dramatic. And again, I'm gonna be dinging the realism score here again. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please pass out, please pass out, please pass out. 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 Putting a safety pin in without any anesthesia is going to be very painful, but this step is really over dramatized and I think completely unnecessary. Mark, Mark, Mark. So Dr. Sloan here is unresponsive and Dr. Yang actually does a secondary survey on him. And what is a secondary survey? It's actually a head to toe assessment that's done very quickly but very thoroughly to check for all the injuries that a patient may have. What can happen is that when a patient comes in initially, a trauma patient, they may not verbalize that they have pain anywhere because the adrenaline is rushing and they may not be feeling it. So when I was a resident and trauma patients would come in, we would literally go from hand, forearm, shoulder, all the limbs, and we would push on every joint and every part of the body to make sure that there was no injury and no pain elicited. What happened? When I rechecked him, he had muffled heart sounds and JVD. Delete tamponade? It's a cardiac tamponade. So cardiac tamponade is when fluid actually builds up in the sac around the heart. Uh, the sac is also known as the pericardium. So when this happened, the pressure on the heart starts to increase and the heart doesn't fill up with blood the way it normally does and blood can't circulate the way it normally should to the rest of your body and you can go into shock. This is a very serious issue that needs urgent intervention. 75%. Four. Well, if you want me to be sure, get me an ultrasound. Will you man an ultrasound? Mm -hmm. Looks like the pericardium's about to burst. We have to drain his pericardial sac and relieve the pressure or, or his heart will stop. With, we don't even have an 18 gauge spinal needle. All right, 18 gauge? Enough? Ultrasound is a imaging modality that uses high frequency sound waves to produce images of structures within your body. And if you look at this picture here, you can see that the operator of the ultrasound is using this transducer, and the transducer is emitting sound waves, and the sound waves actually bounce back, and the ultrasound machine can actually detect how long those sound waves take to bounce back and use those time differences to construct the image. And as you can see here, the ultrasound images are actually very clear. And this here is actually an ultrasound of a cardiac tamponade of the heart. This took me long enough. I'm going in um, subsyphoid knife. So the way to treat a cardiac tamponade is to perform a pericardiocentesis which is using a needle to drain the fluid that's around the heart. So Meredith here says that she's going in sub -xiphoid. And the xiphoid process is this little process of bone that's at the very inferior aspect of the sternum. And you can actually feel it right here. And in this video, you can see which direction the needle is directed. It's actually directed towards the left shoulder. And the needle actually comes pretty close to the heart. So you have to be pretty careful. And let's see what they actually do. 
do. Waiting for his left shoulder. Wait, don't you puncture his heart. I know, I know. Deeper. Oh! That was a success. You saw all the blood squirt out from the tamponade. They actually accessed the pericardium successfully. And what did I tell you? You direct it towards the left shoulder and you have to be very careful because you may hit the heart. My life is pretty damn great. So you're having a rough time. It's nothing, it's a blip. And in the meantime, you're missing your moment. You survived residency. Stop and celebrate that. Cause life changes in an instant. So it sounds like they're about to graduate residency, which is a momentous occasion. This is a pep talk that Dr. Torres is giving them, and I kind of don't understand why they're not happy to graduate. I'm sure there's some backstory behind this. Graduating residency is a big deal, and I remember that I was very, very happy. And residency is great. There's a lot of great experiences. You learn a lot, but it's tough. It's long hours, and you're really, towards the end, counting the days before you finish. And I remember that last day being super happy and excited that I was moving on to the next stage of my career. I'll be okay. No, Mark Sloan, no! Sophia's waiting for you. Callie is waiting for you, and I am waiting for you. We're gonna go home together, okay? Guys, is Mark Sloan also dying in this episode? Are you guys really doing this to me? You guys had Lexi die on me, and now it's gonna be Mark Sloan. And, you know, who is Sophia? And I actually had to Google this, and I found some Grey's Anatomy fan website. This fan website actually said the parents of Sophia are Dr. Torres and Arizona, as well as Mark Sloan. This is pretty confusing. I'm gonna have to watch a few more episodes to really clarify what's going on. Or one of you guys can comment down below and explain it all to me like you've done in the past and clarify the storyline, which I always appreciate. Thank you very much. Great. You have one match left. Hey, no sleeping. You have to stay awake. Okay. Derek. Derek, you too. Oh, I want everyone conscious. All right, so Dr. Yang here is asking everyone to stay awake. To be honest, this is a little over dramatized again because if someone is going to fall into a coma or lose consciousness because of some process or injury, had a stroke or they're bleeding out, staying awake is not gonna change that. They're gonna lose consciousness no matter what. Staying awake is helpful to reassess patients to make sure they can tell you if they can't breathe or something's not right. So it is helpful in that sense. Years we spend as surgical residents will be the best and worst of our lives. We will be pushed to our breaking point. This is the starting line. This is our arena. All right, so we're back to that first scene from the pilot episode of season one where she talks about this is our arena, keeps coming back to that theme. And honestly, this was a pretty intense episode once again. And if I had to score it, I would say that realism, I mean, there were some pretty unrealistic parts to this episode, and I'm not gonna lie. First of all, if you get into a plane crash, plane crashes I hear about in the news, everyone dies. So that's pretty unrealistic to start off with. But they did have some good stuff in there about to immobilize the fractures with a splint. They did talk about spinal cord injuries pretty accurately here. And so overall for realism, I'm going to give it 5 out of 10. In terms of the entertainment score, I have to admit I couldn't stop watching this episode. Pretty similar to most episodes of Grey's Anatomy. Obviously, they're putting in the most exciting stuff. It's unrealistic, but it's super exciting to watch and you want to know what happens. I want to see what happens after this episode. So maybe my next reaction video will be the season opener of season 9. We shall see. In terms of entertainment, I got to give it to you, this is a 10 out of 10 again. So that's a wrap for this plane crash episode of Grey's Anatomy. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, please smash that like button and hit the subscribe and bell notification so you don't miss any future Dr. Reacts videos. If you enjoy these reaction videos, I'm gonna put the playlist of all my Dr. Reaction videos right here for you to watch. And please, please, please leave a comment down below for what episode you want me to react to next. I read every single one of them. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you on the next video.